Buongiorno YouTube, it's Trevor here, Summit or Nothing, back in the front room today. Um, today I am going to be discussing sleeping pads. Recently I asked you guys out there what sleeping pads you use, so I have compiled from my viewers a top five sleeping pads list. But I'm going to just discuss sleeping pads because sleeping pads are something that's always been an issue to me and I wish that I had done this so much sooner, sorted myself out a decent sleeping pad. I've always gone for budget pads which tend to be heavier, they tend to not have such a good R value and they don't tend to be very comfortable. I mean I've gone for in the past uh, a variety of different pads. The first pad I had was one I borrowed off Naif which was 20 quid and it was a self-inflating pad from Mountain Warehouse I think which was all right it was you know comfortable-ish. I don't know what the R value on that would have been on that. I've recently purchased a Berghaus one because it compact quite small another uh, self-inflator but it wasn't all that comfortable. I've had the little foam pads from Nature Hike, um, but the R values again aren't all that great on those, so I've always had to have it with my firm rest, ridge rest underneath. So it's it's been a case of either having something that's uncomfortable or having to carry two budget priced sleeping pads around with me anyway, especially through the winter, which is never ideal. I mean, the amount of camps I've had where I spend the night and the two mats are separating and I'm just constantly pulling them back together and it's been really frustrating. None so more than my Christmas camp a few years ago when I went up to Oak Tour in the winter in the cloud up and that night was just so frustrating. That was where I sort of decided, right, things are gonna change here. Then I went on and bought uh, an OEX self-inflating pad which is huge so that's basically the oex pad that i bought uh, the prowl xl now it was really comfortable again i don't know what the r value is on this i don't think they say it it just says for all seasons um but you see that's like a third of your backpack probably more so that wasn't ideal but again i was going down the budget line trying to get something for the budget and I think well you know I'm going to use this in the winter I'll just I'll take that now I've took it out a couple of times it is large it is comfortable um but it's it's too big basically to pack but you know the rest of this discussion is going to take place sort of through the top five so without any further ado we get on to your top five sleeping pads now number five is the Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. Now this is a sleeping pad I hadn't actually heard of before. Um, it's 160 quid-ish. That's what it's advertised on their site. I think it only comes in one size, which is 183 centimeters long, 51 wide, and eight centimeters thick. It has an R value of 3.5. Now, if you don't know what the R values refer to, it's the temperature that it sort of can withstand. An R value on this guide that I found, an R value of 3.5 is a sort of a minimum of minus 7.5 degrees. So that's quite an impressive R value. And then that's at a weight of 595 grams or packed weight of 675. So it's quite lightweight. Right, I'll read a bit of the spec from their website. Premium lightweight 20D fabrics feel soft and silent. Insulated versions are updated with two layers of suspended thermal mirror metalized film, resulting in lighter, remarkably quiet sleeping pad. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of technology goes into these sleeping pads to sort of give you the, the extra R value. Once you've got a decent R value, you don't need to take a second mat, that is it. So that's what I sort of, wish that i'd done sooner so yeah this one here is a regular price you know 160 quid it's not the cheapest thing but it's it's worth the investment the nemo tensor it is worth mentioning does come with a lifetime warranty as well your number four choice the fourth most popular sleeping pad according to my viewers is the firmarest neo air x firm max now it weighs in at 550 grams for the regular. Now the regular size is 183 centimeters by 51 by 6.4 deep. So it's, it's roughly the same size, it's just not quite as deep as the Nemo Tensor. 
Um, the regular version comes in slightly lighter than the Nemo Tensor, but the R value is impressive, 6.9 R value. Now the table that I was using maxes out at an R value of five, which is minus 22 degrees Celsius. So this is an impeccable R value. Uh, I'll probably never need it for those extremes. I mean, not on Dartmoor, it doesn't get that cold, but it's the x Max, just reading some of their information. Unmatched warmth to weight, patent pending reflective thermo capture technology traps radiant heat while triangular core matrix construction minimizes convective heat loss all without the bulk weight or durability issues. It's ultra packable. Low bulk materials make the mattress ultra compact, as small as a water bottle. It is created with 30D ripstop nylon on the top and 70D ripstop nylon on the bottom. So it's a tough, durable mat there. But I mean, this is why it starts off at around 180 quid just for the regular. And then there are a variety of sizes and also a lifetime warranty. So, you know, it, these things are worth investing on. And I wish I'd done it sooner. So next, our number three, again, it's another Firmarest. It's the Firmarest Neo Air x Lite. So for the regular, you're looking about 160 quid. Um, I think that is what I paid. I mean, I got, I got mine off of Nathan's recommendation. The regular is 183 centimeters by 51 by 6.4. So the same size as the, the X firm, but the R value isn't quite as good. It's an R value of 4.2, which using the same technologies and that, but with a 30 D ripstop nylon this time, top and bottom. So it's not as good an R value, but an R value of 4.2 is good for a minimum of minus 13 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, that's, that's all I need for Dartmoor. I'm not getting down to less than that, I shouldn't afford. Um, because the R value isn't as good, it's why it's sort of cheaper at 160 pounds. Uh, the Firmarest Neo Air X Lite weighs in at 360 grams for the regular. So, you know, it's a good 200 grams lighter than the X Firm which was lighter than the Tensor. So I went out and bought one. I wish I'd done it sooner because it just eliminates having to take two. It eliminates bulk and it has taken the weight from my pack as well. Uh, it is a great investment, but I will say that I wish I had got the large. I sort of skimped again, trying to save a few quid and went for the regular. And I, if you've seen the last video, I felt like I was on the edge of a bed all night. Uh, I'm a side sleeper, so it's not like a roll off, but I think if I'd have gone large, the wider version, I think you can might be able to get a regular wide actually, but even if I'd have done that, it would have prevented me from feeling like I was falling off. But again, there's various sizes, and again, a lifetime warranty. So really worth having a look at. Number two, the second most popular sleeping pad, as recommended by you guys, and used by you guys, is the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. Now, I was only just reading about this the other day in the Great Outdoors magazine in the January edition, the Great Outdoors Awards 2021, where they've basically gone for all the gear from the year and the sl favorite sleeping pad of the year they have given to the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT Extreme. So there we go. You guys have confirmed it. This is another great map. The regular size is 183 by 55. So the regular size is a little bit wider than the, the firm rests. It's 10 centimeters thick and it has an R value of over six. So again, as I said earlier, the table max is out at an R value of five. It's 30D ripstop nylon top and bottom. It does come with a lifetime guarantee and it weighs in at 400 grams. So the Etherlite isn't as lightweight as the Neo Air X Lite, but it's still pretty impressive. And it's it starts off at around 170 quid and with a lifetime guarantee. So a really great choice of sleeping packs there. Now, my number one place, this is where I guess you guys are watching me for as long as this channel has gone on i have been a budget camper and i have used this product myself i'm veering away from it for a couple of reasons but 
the number one choice from the viewers is the Trekology UL80. Now I'm going to discuss the cons and why I am not using this product anymore. I mean, amongst other things, the R value is pretty abysmal for what it is. It's at 1.6 R value, which works to a minimum of six degrees. So even before the winter really kicks in, you're going to be needing an insulated mat underneath. You might not mind doing that, but it's something that I'm trying to eliminate myself. It weighs in at 750 grams. So out of all the products, it is the heaviest. You can see here the size. This is the, for the Trekology UL80 and this is the Neo Air regular. So they're around similar sizes. I'd imagine if you was getting the larger or the wider version that might sort of bring it up to this size, but it doesn't bring it up to that weight. But with the Trekology, I mean, it was the most comfy mattress I've used so far. Uh, it's 190 centimeters by 57 by 10 and, and it's priced at 43 quid. So it is a bargain. It's fine if you're just a, a, a summer camper, but a lot of you that have said that this is your mat have said that you have to take something else with it or have said, but you are having issues with it deflating. So even though it is the most popular, I'd say 60% of all the comments that you gave when you suggested this mat, you pointed out the negatives as well. And that is, it does deflate. This one here now has got to a point where I have to get up two or three times in the night just to pump extra air in it because it's, it's going down. You don't want that, do you? You want to be able to just leave it and try and sleep all night. But that being said, when it is good and comfortable, it is good and comfortable. You will have trouble rolling off that and it is like sleeping on a mattress. But another downfall with it is the warranty. Like every other product that we've reviewed here has had a warranty uh, on their page. But when you go to the UL80, the Trekologies page, you go over to the far side where the warranty section was on all the other products. Trekology don't have a warranty. They have a legal disclaimer. <laughs> so, I mean, what does that tell you about the product? Trekology have sent me stuff in the past and I've been honest with the reviews of them, the UL140. They tried telling me that it was gonna have a really good R value, but they hadn't been confirmed. They still never confirmed it to me. So that suggests to me they found out and it's not as good as they hoped it would be. But I have had enough of skimping where it matters most, comfort and warmth. So that's why I've gone down the Firma S Neo Air route. Look, Christmas is coming up. Why don't you, if you want to winter camp, cut out the crap, don't bother buying twice buying two pads, taking up more of your backpack, or having to fork out again because this it, your pad is inf deflating. Just fork out now, get yourself something decent, or ask, ask your wife or your boyfriend for that as your Christmas present. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. I wish I'd done it sooner, and I probably will at some point be looking to get the, the next size up, which again, you know, kicking myself. I am kicking myself that I've done that. But there you go. This has been your top five sleeping pads. Um, so yeah, thanks ever so much for all your feedback and all your comments. And we will see you all again soon. Chase.